Hi everyone, I'm Monique with Open Gate Quilts and today I'm going to show you day 7 of our 12 Days of Christmas Open Gate Quilting Box. Now if you've been following along, you know that we've been preparing for number 7 um, and there's a few things that you probably are wondering what they were for. Well, I'm going to show you today. So this is number 7. I am going to open it because I do have actually an extra one. So. Um, if you didn't know, um, one of my friends slash employees made all these wonderful little um, stockings for the, the presents, and that was Deb. So if you see Deb on Facebook or anywhere, say thank you for all the hard work for making these. And we all three, Sue, Deb, and I wrapped everything so we really had a blast getting these all ready for you so I do have an extra one so I'm going to open it up so you can see just in case you haven't seen yet this is called English Garden this is one of my favorite projects that I have done in a while I just love it it uses a Dresden ruler and here is the picture of course you get a picture with it um, and here's the actual quilt, so you can actually see it. It uses the Dresden ruler, but it doesn't do a Dresden plate. It does a circle, and I've been really thinking about it, and I just, I there was something about it that I said, I need to do this. So, if you're wondering what were all the gifts that we have gotten so far, well, why, are, why did we do that? Well, of course, the Dresden ruler, and I'm going to show you how to do that, is used for here. And then you've got hand sewing needles, thread, um, you've got thimbles, a thread puller, you've got, what else did I get you? Oh, the little snips. All of those are going to be used in doing this quilt. So that's why I kind of built it, built up to making this little... Uh, table topper and there's so much you can do with this once you know the technique it's actually very simple to do once you know how to do it you can make it larger you can make a table runner you can make a larger wall hanging you could do a bunch of circles there's so much you can do with it so um, I'm going to show you how to do this so let's get everything ready and let's get started so the first thing that you're going to do is you're going to take your um, pieces and you're going to cut them and that uh, and the pieces are in the supply list and what you do is you're going to cut using the Dresden ruler and you're kind of have your strip ready and as you can see I've already cut this angle but we're going to do this so I can show you you're going to line it up between the six and and the three so this is going to be three inches and you're going to cut one side and then you come over here and you can cut the other side and pull this away and then you'll rotate the ruler and to continue to cut so you're going to cut 10 of each light color so that's how you would cut your um, lights so you need both of those so we're going to cut our piece up for our bias circles to make this right around here and we need to cut it on the bias so what you'll do is you're going to take your 45 degree angle on your ruler and you're going to line it up along a straight edge I don't want you to go all the way down here because if you do, these pieces are going to be pretty small. So maybe, um, I don't know, I think that's about uh, eight inches, seven and a half, eight inches. You're going to go out here and you're going to line up your 45 along that nice straight edge and you're going to cut. So your 45 is what's going to give you your um, bias pieces. And then what you're going to do is you're going to just continue to cut. And I like to use my 45 degree angle each time I cut so that I know that it's nice and straight. And 
you just use your 45, go over the width that you need, and keep cutting. If you get to the point where your ruler is not long enough, you can always fold this. And we'll just put these sides away. And then you can cut it like this. So same idea. It's just now we're cutting on we're cutting on the bias, but we're not cutting it this way. We're cutting it folded. So you can do that either way. So you need to do that both for this fabric here, plus you need to do it for your binding. And the sizes, like I said, are included in the instructions. If you are interested in doing this, the instructions are for sale on the Open Gate website. If you have the kit and you are in the 12 Days of Christmas, you don't have to worry about it. Okay, so that's how we do the cutting. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to start the piecing. So now once you have your pieces cut, you need to piece these in a circle. It's really not very difficult. What you'll do is you're going to take these and you're going to take one of each of your lights and you're just going to sew them together with the short end along the short end. And you're going to do that for all 10 of each. So you're just going to sew them. When you press, I like to press as I go, so I press them in one direction. So I always either pressed towards this piece or this piece. And when you're piecing these, make sure you always have the same one on the right and the same one on the left. Once you have those all pieced together, you can make it into your circle. So here is my circle. So it's all ready. I just need to press it. Once it's all ready, the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to place it on my um, square of my floral. When it's on the square, the square of the floral, the next thing I'll do is I'll pin it really well in place and then I'm going to sew a quarter inch on the inside circle and the outside circle. So pin it well, sew on the inside circle, outside circle. And the next thing you're going to do is you're going to quilt it. So you have your all your um, bias pieces cut and what you want to do is you want to put them together. So you would draw your 45 degree angle and line it up and sew it along there. And then you're going to make the lengths that are needed for both the binding and the um, inside circles. Um, so I've already done that so grab those. I'm going to start with the center. So here is my quilt and here is my binding so I'm just like I said I'm gonna start in this center and when you're putting these on um, you can put your walking foot on or your even feet foot and that will help keep it going so um, it pulls all three layers together what you're gonna do is you're going to take your bias piece and you're going to line it up along the edge of 
your quilt here. What's going to happen is it's going to pull on top of your seam and enclose that seam. So let me show you how to do that. Okay, so I have my walking foot on and now I'm going to sew all the way around. And you want to take your time doing this and kind of help it push it in a little bit so you have some give in your bias piece. And again, you're going to use your quarter inch seam. And I start, I have a little bit of a uh, end on here so I don't, uh, so I can um, complete the ends together. So go ahead and start. And like I said, take your time. Um, you can kind of lift your foot and go. Um, and then like just line it up along the raw edge here and just keep going. Once you get where you have a little bit of a tail, you're going, you've got some not sewn, you're going to take it out of your machine. I'm just going to go a little farther. You're going to take it out of your machine. And then you're going to sew this and these ends together. So how are you going to do that? And look how cool that looks. See, once you have it down, then you can press it and you can hand sew. That's why you've got all the, the needles and the thread that I gave you and the thimble. So you can hand sew this down and it'll look so pretty and so finished. Okay, so let me show you how to do this. And just kind of pin it in place here. And then, or hold it in place and have a little give like we had. Same thing here. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take and put a pin right where this ends. And then I'm going to pull this open. And I'm going to open this one up, lay it down so it lays right along that pin there. And then I'm going to, again, pin it in place, lift it up so it does not go on the quilt. Kind of have to move it a little bit because it's a little tight, awkward, but that works. And then put another pin in. And then what you can do is draw your diagonal line. Now, I am just going to eyeball it, but you can draw your diagonal line so you know which way. Remember, you don't want to go this way. You want to go parallel to the quilt. So you're going to go this way. And I'm going to put that pin in there, lift it up. I'm just going to leave my walking foot on, even though it's not going to, it's better to have your regular foot, but I'm just going to leave that on. And I'm going to sew. And then I'm going to take it out, take the pin out, take the pins out, excuse me, make sure that it looks good, that I got my angle right, and then I will continue sewing that up. Make, make sure you cut these off though before 
you get going here. How are you going to do that? Then I'm going to just finger press this. Lay this down. Again, we're going to even it up with our raw edge there. Using my quarter inch and kind of get a little pucker. Don't worry about it because um, this is bias and it'll just iron right out. So bias can be very forgiving and that's why we use it for something like this because of the circle. And then once I get that done, again, I'm going to take it out and then take it to the ironing board and just press this nicely so you've got your little bias covering your seam. And then um, I'll show you a little bit of hand sewing after this. Okay, now I have the bias pieces on and I'm ready to hand sew these down. Now you certainly can machine sew it, you just have to pin it really nicely. The, the reason I want to do it by hand is it really gives it a nice finished look and it doesn't show the stitching. Again, it's really a preference whether you want to do it or not, but I did provide you with the whatever you need for the hand sewing. So you also get your little bag, and of course, me being the pink lover, I made myself a little pink one. You have your straw needles, your thread, and, um, and of course, your thimbles. Now, there's two different sizes of thimbles. The different sizes will go on whatever size finger you have, so I'm going to use the pink one. And... Um, then I'm going to go ahead and get it ready to sew on. I did choose straw needles, and the reason I chose straw needles, and I don't know how well you can see it, but the reason I chose, I'm going to pull this aside so you can kind of see this needle a little better. The reason I chose a straw needle is that it's thinner and longer and will give you smaller stitches. It takes a little bit to get used to, but once you do, it really makes it easy and makes beautiful stitches. So of course, what you want to do is you want to kind of pin it down so it's in place when you stitch. When you stitch, what you're going to do is you're going to come in and I always come in from underneath my bias here and I'm going to stitch and when you stitch what you want to do is you want to hit the background and you want to go into your fabric just a little bit of bite so I went, it's about, uh, about an eighth of an inch. So I'm stitching through my background into my bias and pull it out. Again, I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to go in the background and I'm going to come up into my bias piece. And you're just going to use that thimble to push that needle through. Really a thimble is to protect your finger from getting any kind of pricks in there. And it just takes practice getting used to it. This is a new one for me, so I'm also getting used to it, but I actually kind of like it. I'm glad I got some of these. And it just, it just helps you protect your finger. So again, I'm going to use that. So I take background, bite, and then I continue. So then I'm going to go all the way around here and all the way around here. And then once I'm done that, and I want to do this after, this is all stitched down. What I'll do is I'm going to measure from this, this outside edge, and I'm going to go two and a half inches. 
Now say for instance, it's only two and a quarter inches. That's fine. Find your smallest distance and that's what you're going to draw your or mark, put your marks on and then cut it in a circle so that you have, and I'll grab my other one here, you have the circle on the outside. So it can be two and a quarter, can be two, two and a half, just depends on what you have. I had about two and a quarter, and then once I have the binding on, it keeps all those edges on, and you get this beautiful little table topper. And that's how you finish that off. Once you're done stitching the bias on, and um, stitching your binding on, then you can put it on your table and enjoy it. If it's not your favorite um, fabrics, you can always give it as a gift. Actually, the second one I'm making is a gift for a friend who absolutely loved it, because I love it, so I'm keeping this one and giving her that one. So I need to finish that up before Christmas. But anyway, that's the last thing we're gonna do. This is day number seven of our 12 Days of Quilting, the Open Gate Christmas box. If you're interested in next year's box, you can email me at info at opengatequilts.com and I can put you on the list for next year. What I did this past year is I announced it and then I sent an email to anybody who is interested in and um, it's first come first serve once that's full, we're done, um, and at that point, I will get take payment. Um, I did it in August, and it worked out fine. If you have any questions on anything, please let me know. I'm here to help. I want to help you um, make this fun and actually pretty easy project. It's the, the tools that we used and all the things that we do that I gave you should make it pretty simple. Um, easy to make and fun to make. If you have any questions, again, you can always contact me at info at opengatequilts.com and I'll help you with it. If you are not in the box and you were would um, like the pattern, it is available on my website, opengatequilts.com and you can um, check that out and download the pattern. Um, if you have any other questions, like I said, contact me. Thank you, everyone, and I hope you have a wonderful Merry Christmas, and thank you for subscribing. Quilt, find, and enjoy.